everyone today we'll finish up related rates and get any of your questions on any of be on any of the problems and then Monday also additional day for review. change a base formula if you want, because some like we wrote it in another format. But what I just wrote, that's not going to help. So I'm going to cross it out. It's the next way we want. So I'm going to be to write as a ratio of logs. I'm going to go like this. I don't want that. This is what we want. We can write it like this. We can write it in terms of ln as long as we write ln of x cubed plus 1 divided by natural log of whatever that base is. So I know this was base 10, that's the common log, but it could have been base 6 or something. Yeah, this one was 5. Right? Oh, see, there you go. She goes, we, we would write an ln of blah, 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 divided by natural log 5. So you'll notice, we're like, oh my goodness, this is really 1 over the natural log of 10. Over the natural log of 10 is just some irrational number like pi. So that's just a constant. I'll just keep that in front. That's like a big constant right there. Times this is equal to that times the natural log of x cubed plus 1. So when we differentiate, as long as we fix that at the beginning, Clara, then when we do the derivative, we'll just do our derivative of natural log, and we'll just keep this constant in front by the constant rule. Isn't that cool? And you can do all LOG base 10s and LOG base 5s that you want to when it comes to differentiation. So, I'll leave this, I'll just carry this down. All right, now we're gonna differentiate this. Over. So, the constant rule says, oh, I can just keep that constant there. Now, how do you differentiate that? Two x squared over x squared. Oh, I love it. 
This x cubed plus 1 just goes down here, right? Mm -hmm. Good. So it's like this. I don't know if you're curious. When it comes to so it makes sense. We're doing chain rule. The variable natural of x is 1 over x. So when I do chain rule, I'm calling that g. Right? So I go 1 over g times g prime. And then g prime is, I'll just take off the 1, what's the derivative of x cubed plus 1? So isn't that cool when you do derivative of an ln? The natural log actually disappears. And there's the answer. You can leave it like this. Or if you want, you just want to write it as 3x squared over natural log 10 times x cubed plus 1. But that's a, there's not many of those, though, are there? And just expect that. Just expect that, seriously, throughout the calculus go. You may never see it again. <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to check with you after Calc 3 and differential equations. Here we got a log base 10 over. Use it natural log. Wasn't it similar to this, everyone? We rarely got this guy. <coughs> Wasn't it similar? And we said, oh, the derivative was 2 to the x times natural log of 2. Mm -hmm. Or here's another one. 10 to the x. We rarely get these. You go, what is the derivative? Natural log of 10 times 10. We just rarely get this. So here, I guess we're just multiplying the natural log of that number, where it's the base of the exponent. And with these logarithms, we're dividing by the natural log of the base, if that helps. But they rarely come up. You'll see how many times you get them through the future sections. It's usually base, you know, natural e, the natural base e, where do you get natural log? Hey, any other questions? Yeah, on 3.7, actually, we were doing it that day. <clears throat> Number one, like when the particle i, the, when the particle is speeding up and slowing down, we did two curves. Uh, you were showing about the magnitude of v. Can you go over it for one more time? I sure will. And you're talking about doing the speed, right? Mm hmm. Speeding Let's up. do it. And when, when it comes to speed, uh, <coughs> There's a couple ways to look at speed. I think the easiest is to think of how that's the magnitude of velocity. And like we could put the absolute value bars around velocity. Mm -hmm. And just think of that graph all upstairs. So if velocity went like what? Let me just make a velocity. No, let's say the velocity went like this. Mm -hmm. Let's say that was velocity. What would the speed graph do? Speed would go. And then what would happen to all this? Oh. It'd flip right up. And then, like that. Does anyone see that? Mm -hmm. And so when they go, find where it's slowing down or speeding up, we can just go, speeding up, slowing down. Speeding up, slowing down. Speeding up. Slowing down. I know. And that's the way I think, great way to approach speed. Long, long time ago, I mean, like, I don't know, 20 years ago, I we did it in a way I just remember, don't remember. Like you do both velocity and acceleration, and there was something like both, if they were both positive, I, I remember what the formula was. You got it. You know? If both the velocity were, and acceleration are both the same sign. Same sign, yeah, same sign. Then they're speeding What's up. What's happening with the object? Speeding up, yeah. It's speeding up. So if anybody wanted to know this, all right, you are correct. People like this little physics thing. If velocity and acceleration, are both positive, the object or the particle speeding up. But if they're both negative, the object's also what? Speeding up. Yeah. Velocity and acceleration should have different signs. One's positive, the other one's negative. Velocity's positive, acceleration's negative. Velocity's negative, acceleration's positive. What's going on with that particle? Speeding down. Yeah. Yep, slowing down. That is absolutely true. You can actually use that to, you know, analyze it and solve that problem. Yeah, yeah. That's a great little fact to know, though. So cool. Isn't that used for the uh, second derivative test? That's right. You're right. Concave up, concave down. Very good. So when is it slowing down? Oh, oh, when is it slowing down? Yeah. So this is, and we're talking about velocity and acceleration. We're, let's say we're talking about some particle. If both velocity and acceleration have the same signs, that means they're both positive, 
but they're both negative at some point. At some time, it could be, uh, just I'm thinking like at time equal to 2.3 seconds, they're both positive. That means the object has to be speeding up at that moment. And then we go, all right, when's it slowing down? When velocity and acceleration at a moment in time have different signs. And what I mean by that is one is positive, the other is negative, or vice versa. Cool. Couldn't you also look at it like it's going closer to the x axis, getting slower and just moving away? Brilliant. I love that. That's good. I like that. So you can look at all these ways. Everyone, please use the way you find the easiest. I love just looking at the speed graph. Yeah, you know, like, all right, I'm just going to go, all right. Object sped up, object sped slow down. Object sped up, object slow down. And this is just to find it. It's always just what? Absolute value. Absolute value. Everybody know where apps is on a calculator? I use catalog. So if you go to second zero, look at the first thing on the list. If you ever just wanted to graph the absolute value of any graph. It's also if you go to math and then over the number. Oh, you're the best. She goes, you can also find it in math, arrow to the right to num. The ABS. That's the first one on the list. Outstanding. That's why I did it. I used to teach art, I used to teach AP Calc years and years and years. I Students would crush that exam, you know, but uh, whenever that counts, that's what I always recommend. But everyone, you know, they would use this technique. But you represent about mentioned about going close to the x-axis, but this always would work. Which one is that? What is the one he said? If closer to x-axis? As he was saying, he, he realized when it was getting closer to that x-axis, uh -huh. like yes. the velocity, like right here, uh -huh. right versus the velocity right here, what would that indicate? Slowing down. Yeah, but then it starts getting what? Okay. Further away. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Any other? Hey, we'll do some related rates problems. We can do any you want. We do ones from the text. The one I want to do was an even problem, because the even answers on the back, right? And so it's number, maybe you got a chance to do it. I don't know. It's number 14. It had ships moving. Um, is there another ship movement problem? Can we do one? Look at the examples of the book. Example one, example two. Nah, sample four is a car. All right, let's do 14. Hey, before I raise this, I should sew a student in here. If you're like, it's something about speeding up and slowing down with the signs. I didn't understand what it meant. I guess maybe before I erase this. And when right there, at that moment in time, this is time. Do you agree the velocity is negative? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. And is an acceleration derivative velocity? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I took the derivative velocity, I'm talking about the slope here. So that point right there is negative. Right there, so I'm going to say B is negative. Acceleration is the derivative velocity, which is slope of tangent line. And when telling you about the slope of that line, is the slope of that line positive or negative? Negative. So acceleration is negative. So it's speeding up. And so when velocity and acceleration have the same signs, that means the object must be speeding up at that moment in time. And you would see it right here in this graph because the object is doing what? Speeding up mm -hmm. right there at that moment. Does that make sense? I thought, before I raise this, I wanted just to show you that, so you're like, hey, how can you look at that? That's exactly how you can look at it. That's how you can analyze that, if you like that. I'm working a problem. You don't want to do this. All right. Good deal. All right. I'll read this to you. Let's make a decent sketch. At noon, ship A is 150 kilometers west of ship B. Okay. First of all, uh, west coast, right, <laughs> east coast, we're going to get this right, uh, west, that's east, right? Mm -hmm. And they go, at noon, ship A is 150 kilometers west of ship B. All right? A, I'm going to put it in the middle. All right. 
A, B, 150 kilometers. What that do? What do you all think? At noon, ship A is 150 kilometers west of ship B. Will that do? Mm -hmm. For a sketch? Good. We, we drew something after we read that, right? But now these ships are going to move somewhere. They might go north, south. We'll see. They might go this way. They might go that way. East or west. Here's what they said. Ship A is sailing east at 35 kilometers per hour. All right, let's just make a note.